Thursday afternoon. Hi, everybody. Rod Hill coming to you from uh, Vancouver. Hey, one of the topics I want to talk more about uh, is snow. And I want to talk about the comparison of a year ago. I know I've done this, but I've put together some figures for you that might make you go, wow. Um, so what you're looking at on the left is Mount Hood snow, Timberline, an inch fell. Meadows got an inch from last night into early this morning as well. There was a little bit of snow on the ground around Santiam and Willamette Passes, but government camp was, was just clean uh, this morning and staying in the mid-30s. On the right is the big forecast change. You know, the last several times I've been, I, I've, uh, been talking about how the weekend looked dry. Saturday was the more high-confident call. We were keeping an eye on Sunday. Well, now a front that was coming in on Monday is coming in on Sunday. So that means Sunday now has rain in it. So that is the forecast change. This particular model, I believe this is the GFS model, shows maybe 32 one hundredths of an inch of rain along the coast. It picks up uh, some bullseyes of over a half of an inch of total moisture up in the Cascades, but gives Portland and Salem less than two tenths of an inch of rain and about the same uh, up around Seattle. So we'll get more into that. Now to the comparison graphic um, that I was talking about. Check this out. So, as I'm sure you know now, because I've been talking about it, all three resorts on Mount Hood, Skibo, Meadows, Timberline, they were all open for daily operations in mid-November a year ago. So on this date, November 20th, a year ago, Timberline had 49 inches of a base for their operations for skiing and boarding. If you measure every snow flake that had fallen since September, 90 inches total. That's all the snow that comes and some of it melts and back and forth, 90 inches. Meadows, 42-inch base, 72-inch total. Compare that to what's going on on this day, November 20th, 2025. No base. Timberline had, has seen going back to September of 54 inches, but all of that is literally melted. Meadows, no base. They've seen 19 inches. All of that is totally melted. One of the things that's different this year is that November is running crazy warm. I, I, I just did the tally. So through yesterday, November 19th, uh, November at PDX is running four degrees Fahrenheit above normal in terms of combined mean temperature, the average at the high and the low for each day. That's substantial. When you're talking about a period of time and you're calculating the means or the averages and you come up with three degrees or more of a deviation from what's considered the, the seasonal average, that's really considerable. So it's a really warm November. It's been part of the problem. Now, with that said, Courtesy of Hillcrest uh, Ski and Board Shop in Gresham. They rent gear, they sell it, clothing, ski, uh, skis, boards, boots, the whole nine yards. Um, we have some snow potentially coming on Sunday and Monday. Not a lot, but some. Tomorrow, mainly dry. Saturday, mainly dry. Snow levels up to about 6,000 feet. Um, so if we get some sun, Timberline will probably lose entirely that inch that fell last night. Sunday... Right now, the snow level sets up to be about uh, 5,000 down to 4,000 feet. Um, and there may not be anything at government camp, but there could be six inches at Timberline and Meadows. And then you have the snow level lower, maybe 3,000 feet to 2,500 feet on Monday for some snow showers, one to three. So if you add the six to the three, it's nine. And maybe I'm low. Maybe there's a foot that falls at Timberline and Meadows, Sunday to Monday. But then we go back to dry weather on Tuesday. There's another system that comes on Wednesday of next week. That snow level is 5,000 feet. We're going to need some sort of a miracle or something absolutely blowing up that we don't see right now on the forecast miles to give the resorts any prayer of any type of partial opening on Thanksgiving weekend. So we'll keep you updated on that. All right. The Momentous Swell podcast, listen on Apple Podcast, listen on Spotify for a variety of investment topics meant to educate you. Brought to you by a local firm that's licensed for your retirement planning in Oregon and Washington, Momentous Wealth Management. I've used this firm and the guy who um, was the founder of it, Todd Pisarczyk, going all the way back to 1999. And I couldn't be more pleased. Could not be more pleased. Could be richer, <laughs> but could not be more pleased. All right, let's 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 get you going. It is a Thursday afternoon. Looks like the shower chance is over. We got partly cloudy skies generally on my camera network. There's Gearheart. There's the uh, Channel House in Depot Bay. There's Wine Country. There's Gresham Persimmon Country Club, Camas Meadows, Lewis River, the Oregon Garden Resort. Of course, they are now gearing up for their Christmas market village that they do, which is really, you know, it's, it's a nice little market. You can spend a couple hours out there walking around and, and visiting and enjoying the lights. Uh, the Gorge, Aspen Lakes Golf Course over in Sisters, downtown Portland, Sunshine over in, in Canada. Okay.
So we're pretty quiet right now. What's going on? We do have, see, this is this afternoon. See this enclosed contour? This is the upper flow pattern at 500 millibar, 18,000 feet. Upper level low sitting on top of us. There's no moisture feeding into it. So if you notice, we have some cumulus clouds. And then when they split or break, you can see it's clear blue up top. Uh, so there's no moisture feed. We're unstable enough to keep some of the cumulus clouds around, kind of partly cloudy. We're in the mid-50s. It's really nice outside. This fetch of moisture comes in and streams to our north tomorrow on Friday. The valley could have fog in the morning and then get sun. Now, this fetch of clouds will still be to our north Saturday, but Saturday it might start to drop a little bit into our region. So I'm not sure if Saturday is partly sunny or overcast, certainly in Washington or the North Valley here in Portland. But uh, it should be dry. Everything still shows it's dry. And then right back in here, see that little curl right here? This is where the front is going to develop. And then that's what will pop in Sunday and bring us back to some likely rain. So uh, I'm going to show you this. Uh, I'm looking for new products to show you, so I'm not boring. All right. This is the GFS water vapor. Uh, we're going to play this. This is this afternoon. Okay. Let me – and see where we're in the brown. So, again, a water vapor typically is measuring – uh, moisture levels aloft. So it's what I just said. There's no clouds up top, just some low cumulus clouds. So that brown, that's dry. Okay. Let me play this into tomorrow. Now notice this is this is tomorrow afternoon. This is that fetch of cloudiness. I mean, this is not, don't misunderstand. The water vapor is not the same as showing you an infrared, an infrared satellite picture, which shows you expected clouds. But this is where the main plume of water vapor is, so it heightens the chance that the cloudiness that I'm talking about streaming to our north is somewhere up in this area. So you can see this. It's a little more vivid to look at for the point of illustration than an infrared satellite picture. So this is tomorrow afternoon. This is mainly, I think, cloudiness to our north. And you see that, and actually see the dry wedge that comes in down right here? Yeah. So if we get out of valley fog in the morning, we should have some decent sun, I think. Uh, increasing clouds as you head north of Portland. Here's Saturday. Remember I said a moment ago, here it is Friday. Let me back it up. There's Friday. The main cloud flows really to our north. But notice how the water vapor drops increasing water moisture a lot, which could be cloudiness into our area Saturday. So maybe Saturday turns out to be cloudy. If that's the case, we'll probably do well just to get up to 50-51. Again, let me back it up. This is kind of cool. This is west to east orientation. Now you're going to watch this bend like this, north and south. And that's the front. Coming in Sunday morning, right here. See it? Yeah, there's Portland right here. That's the front, Sunday morning, developing rain. That blows through, and then we've got showers Sunday night, showers into Monday. Notice how this takes away any high-level moisture behind the cold front, so it would be cumulus clouds with scattered showers and probably some sun breaks. That's Sunday afternoon into Monday. Um, right now, I show Tuesday as dry. Let me get you into Tuesday. Uh, that's Monday. See, there's a little bit of moisture that actually comes back in. So Monday's a scattered shower day. Here's Tuesday. The thickest moisture water droplet-wise aloft is where you see the green. That's holding out. Gives us hope of maybe a dry Tuesday. Not that we need a dry Tuesday. Here's Wednesday. That's a little system clearly coming through. We see the green. That's heightened moisture aloft. Doesn't mean it's going to precip, but it's a piece of the puzzle. And I do think there's going to be some moisture passing us Wednesday with the system. And then comes Thanksgiving Day. Let me back this up into Wednesday night. Here's Wednesday. Notice how there's a little bit of ridging. See, it kind of arcs over us. This goes into Thanksgiving morning, and then it kind of lays back down. Still kind of trying to arc. It's possible we have a dry Thanksgiving. And then this is a front that comes in on Friday, and then that gets us back to a wet Thanksgiving weekend, Friday into Saturday. Okay, so I thought that was a pretty good illustration of what I'm looking at uh, in the weather flow. So here's the... Um, Total precept, this is what could fall this coming, according to the American GFS model, this coming um, Sunday into Monday. And if you combine the two days, Sunday, Monday, which would include scattered showers Sunday night, scattered showers Monday, this shows Portland could get a half of an inch. Shows two tenths Seattle, about a half of an inch up in Olympia, about a quarter of an inch down in Salem, quarter of an inch down in Eugene, over an inch in Tillamook, 39 100s down in Florence. Okay, some moisture out over the blues, really not much of anything down in Medford, just some light totals. So most of the models show that Portland and Salem and Vancouver are at least going to pick up a quarter of an inch of rain Sunday and Monday. So we'll see. Maybe it's a little bit more than that. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you. Um, and then here is a look. Let's let's look at a couple of things that are extended flow pattern looks. Okay, I looked at all this stuff this morning. 
This is that air mass map temperature color coded at 5,000 feet, 850 millibars. The orange, red, warm, the blue to green, cold and colder and colder. Okay. This is this afternoon. Uh, we had that weather system that came through last night. So we're relatively in a cool air mass, although it's in the mid 50s out right now. It's really pretty warm. Okay. And then let me, I'm just looking at the colors here. Here's warming coming in Friday. There's warming coming in Saturday into Sunday. And then this very vividly, this is Sunday at uh, 4 a.m., right? Here's the front, just offshore, Sunday at 4 a.m. See, the this is cool because you got the warmer air ahead of it. Here's the front where you see the little dip in the, the streamlines. And then there's the cold air mass in green that comes in during the day Sunday and then into Monday. Right now, I, again, I showed you that snow graphic that shows Sunday night and Monday snow levels down to about 2,500 feet. So that's nice. Some snow up in the high country. Still relatively cool going into Tuesday. And then look at the warming take place. This is Wednesday, and then this is Thanksgiving Day of next week. This is the American GFS model. So if this is correct, Thanksgiving Day would have a good chance to be fairly mild. Again, this is not a surface temperature projection. It's an air mass map of 5,000 feet. It's only one piece of the puzzle. But it does show overall a mild weather flow in Thanksgiving Day. Here comes that system on Friday. Here's the colder air coming in during the day Friday with rain developing. This is the 28th, the day after Thanksgiving. There we've got showers and cool weather on Saturday the 29th. And then this is interesting. Let me back this up. This is interesting. Okay. This is getting into Sunday, the final day of November, the 30th. Look at this cold core in purple over Montana. And there's this cold air mass across the Great Lakes in the upper Midwest. And it kind of leaks into what we have going on. So all of a sudden, that's a cold fetch across the northern tier of our country. And then the bulk of that cold air going into Tuesday, December 2nd, moves into the Rockies. Well, we kind of moderate and we get some warming. Let's continue going. But there's some more cold air Wednesday the 3rd. There's a little system dropping down out of the Gulf of Alaska. This will be Friday the 5th of December. All right, so that's interesting. So that shows, you know, really starting Thanksgiving weekend, maybe we get into more of an active pattern. Our pattern hasn't been very active, as you know, the last uh, couple of weeks uh, in particular. Here's what I typically show you. This is the 500 millibar, 18,000 foot flow. And this is in, in sets of uh, this model, the American CFS, to look out extended, uh, comes in sets of seven, seven day anomaly averages. Okay, so here we go. So this is um, tomorrow, Friday, all the way through next weekend. And the average is fairly mild, right? Here's the little kind of weak ridging in here. So you're just, and you're just looking for any pat pattern changes. Now this is going into next week. There's that warming ridge pattern, or at least warming into Thanksgiving day. And look what happens now. This is into the first few days of December. This is one of the colder troughs to drop down across the east. Now, the jet stream almost always, if it, if it dips down across the east, then we get ridging over the west, so we're mild, and then boom, it plunges and drops down across the east. Here's that 540 contour highlighted in blue right here. That's the polar jet. So if this were over us, I'd be telling you we would have snow levels down to 2,000 feet, maybe even 1,500 feet. But it's down over the Great Lakes. That's pretty good lake effect snow. All right. So if this is correct, it makes you think the first week of December is going to be cold across the Great Lakes in the east, but still kind of mild for us, just looking at the upper flow pattern and the upper flow pattern only, which is only a piece of the puzzle. I'm just curious as what this shows. And then look, the, the pressure height's going all the way through. This is into a January 4th for, for good gravy. So if this is correct, you've got a cold flow pattern aloft through the first 10 days of December, and then we, we were kind of mild on the west, and then we stayed kind of mild. Remember, my winter outlook called for our December to have a chance to be at least a near normal to colder than normal. This animation I just showed you would not support that, so we'll keep following it. Kind of, at this point, desperately looking for some snow patterns for the Cascades for obvious reasons. So I'm starting to look out more through the month of December. Okay, let's go around the horn. 50 in Medford right now, 52 the high. All dry through Saturday. Remember that rain projection didn't show much down in the south uh, western corner of our state away from the coast? This shows Medford could be dry all the way into the next week. Daytime highs in the 50s. We'll see if that's true. If you go to the North Men, there's going to be some rain. Yeah, there's Sunday rain, Monday showers, Tuesday showers. Again, temps in the 50s. Not bad. Here's Central Oregon. All dry until a Sunday p.m. rain chance. And then some shower chances in the mid part of next week. 
but you know, just kind of typical nice weather really for this time of the year. Let's go to Eugene. 52 this afternoon, dry tomorrow, dry Saturday, chilly lows in the 30s, daytime highs about 50. There's the rain coming in Sunday with the shower chance on Monday. Okay. All right. And, you know, if this is your city, I, I, I get you want to look at all the numbers because this goes through Wednesday. These are the National Weather Service, weather.gov, automated seven-day forecast products. This shows some rain in the valley on Wednesday of next week, which, remember, we looked at. And then the possibility of a dry Thanksgiving followed by rain on Friday. And, again, this time of the year, that far out, if you're talking about a dry day five, a wet day six, and a dry day seven, or vice versa, the odds of that timing holding aren't very good. So I would say right now Thanksgiving Day looks dry, but it's you know it's right on the edge. Okay, all right. Let's go up to Seattle. This afternoon, nice weather, nice weather, nice weather. There's the rain on Sunday. Yeah, temps in the fifties. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and show you Portland seven day. You can get all of these city forecasts if you're traveling across our area. It's kind of handy on my PortlandWeather.com web website, Northwest City page, and you'll get that user interface. Here's my seven day brought to you by Hazel Dell Tire Pros. Uh, I think we're at 54 right now. So maybe the high this afternoon is going to be 55 or 56. Shower chance seems to be over, partly cloudy. Fog to sun tomorrow. Some of you will be in the mid-30s in the valley tomorrow morning. I've got Portland 39 to 52 with afternoon sun. Saturday is the day that maybe it clouds over. And if it clouds over, then this high temperature instead of 55 is probably going to be closer to 51 or 50. So we'll see. Likely rain on Sunday. Sun and scattered showers Monday. Current timing suggests a dry Tuesday, a wet Wednesday, a dry Thanksgiving, but and then a wet Friday. I'll be surprised if that timing holds. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. That helps me out. If you haven't and you want to, I hope you will, um, then you will be notified when I post a new video if you have your notifications turned on. I'm Rod Hill. I'll talk to you soon.